30 seconds, stand by. We're doing it more and more. Coming up on G4, 13 full. We're doing it more often with fewer people. But by going live more often and in more places, are we really thinking about safety? 15 to 20 feet from any close up power line. Even 20 feet is too close. This dish is inches away. An inch and a half, you can get it closer. Of course, it is a cable TV line. I think that's just dandy. Watch out, look. Jesus. I'm just kind of interested to see what's going to happen to all the power and all the cable TV here when that thing fires up. Push 250 watts of microwave energy through that, light, that cable. It has a tendency to get radiation. Pretty close to the line. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm trying to avoid. Potential for an accident. Well, luckily not on this day. But there is a general um, as to how far you should put your mast or dish up to a line. Mark Bell from Television Broadcast Magazine puts it best by saying the safest distance to a power line is 10 feet for the first 50,000 volts, with 4 inches added for each 10,000 volts above that. Maintain the 10 feet and double it if you're not sure. Here at KSTP, the rule of thumb is basically three truck lengths or 30 feet between your mast and a power line. How do you do that? Just figure out the length of your truck times three. That's the easiest way to do it. When parking, then to make sure that we don't have any power lines overhead, and we usually want to judge that at two lengths of the truck, which run, run, works out to about 35 to 40 feet. 35 to 40 feet, or two truck lengths. A distance to try and live by, or to try and save your life by. 11 upper at 1845. Satellite shots can be just as dangerous as microwave shots. We have the microwave mast up, satellite dish up for this shot for different reasons, but I won't go into that, but we have to check safety on all counts. Just as important to make sure that everything on top of that truck is as far away from any obstruction. Power lines, lightning, trees, anything. Safety first. I wanted to make a point especially about night. This is shot at natural light. The best weapon you have with safety at night is first thing you do, hop out of the truck, grab your flashlight, use your spotlight in the truck, Look at your dish, then look at your power lines. Too close, two to three truck links away. This is way too close. A simple flashlight or spotlight can save your life. It doesn't take much time at all. What I'm about to show you is some very graphic video from Des Moines, Iowa from September of 1997. <laughs> The Channel 5 reporters probably never knew what hit them, but Bingham was conscious on the scene but badly burned. Kimberly Arms, also badly burned, was unconscious. One of them raised this tall microwave mass that extends from the top of their live van. It touched a power line along Franklin Avenue. That's when 13,000 volts shot through the van and the crew. As soon as the antenna went up, I heard a, a big bang. I looked down under the van and the guy that was running the News 5, he collapsed under the van and burst into flames. So I jumped out of my truck, ran over here. About that time, the lady newswoman, she ran around to try to help him. She bent down and it just sucked her right in and she started on fire. Cautious witnesses tried to help the injured reporters get out, but the van was still electrified. I heard a scream, I saw the girl run around and then I heard a pop and I heard one last scream. She went down, and so I, I came over sprinting, you know, and I told the rest of the, my kids that were playing with me, you know, call 911. And I came over here, I started putting their backs and hands out with my shirt, you know, fire. Mid-American power crews arrived shortly after the police and fire trucks. Spokesman Kevin Wakey says that 13,000 volts are more than enough to be deadly. Power tries to find the path of least resistance. It goes straight down. So if you make contact, it's going to go straight down and into the van, and that's uh, apparently what happened in this case. We try to keep the mast at a safe distance so that the wind would blow and that sort of thing. It couldn't even come close to the power lines. We need to respect those power lines and to maintain a lot of separation. For whatever reason, the Channel 5 Raider did not see the lines overhead that threatened his life. And though those of us in the business of television read now and then about these incidents happening elsewhere, it is hard to believe it happened here. I've never seen this happen. Um, and in fact, uh, when setting up a live shot, I know that the photographers are, are, are trained. Look up first. Make sure that uh, you're not coming in, cont in contact with anything. 
News Channel 8 photographer Sarah Strom happened to be driving by when the accident happened and knew immediately what was going on. After warning people to stay clear of the still-charged van, calling and seeing the ambulances arrive, she, like every other television employee on the scene, found this news story far too close to home not to be affected. This could happen to anybody that we know. It's horrible. It's very scary to think that that could happen any day and it happened here. Mid-American Energy says the top wire of that specific power line carries about 60,000 volts. The mass touched the lower power line that carries 13,200 volts, 105 times the amount of the electric outlets in your home. Those are only 120 volts. It only takes 110 volts to hurt somebody. Imagine what a power line can do when it hits the ground. And this is where it, hit, it came in contact with the ground. That power line is 7,200 volts, so when it hits the ground, it's hot enough to turn the dirt into glass, and it's still hot to the touch. Here's some very graphic footage from Washington, D.C. This is where Al Battle passed away. He was a turn of CNN, and this is how he lost his life. Get out of there! Yeah, there might be some... What the hell's in there? God damn. Call 911! Call 911! I'll come across. Um, it's a terrible situation, and if you ever saw a situation with, like Al, I think it really gets your attention. Here's another example from Pittsburgh, another van parked underneath power lines. On the internet, the World Wide Web is a lot of information you can steal on ENG safety. So you can put it in writing and write your own safety training manual to get it in writing in policy form for your own newsroom and certify everybody. Another good place for information can be from your power company. Here's an example of just some things to think about from PG&E. forgot that the ground was hot and that voltage diminishes in concentric circles like ripples in a pond. Forgot that he was stepping into a lower voltage than what was under his back foot. Forgot to hop or shuffle with his feet together. Feels all right. Dan Nelson's one of the lucky yeah. ones. He got Myers and lost his leg as a result of an ENG oh, accident. Oh. a really lacking attitude in the industry towards ENG safety and uh, management hasn't paid enough attention to it and it's gone on for too long. Uh, I don't know, I mean, I've, I've been a victim, there have been other victims and there will, will be more, but Somebody's got to stand up and get somebody's attention. Mark Bell from Cast Magazine says distraction is the biggest problem in ENG and SNG accidents. 30 seconds. 30 seconds can be a period of time that if you walk around your truck and take a look, it can save your life. You might not even have to die. If you have a crippling accident, it can affect your life forever. 30 second walk around by checking under the truck, checking up over the truck can be the difference. 30 seconds gets interrupted, start it again. Give yourself 30 seconds. It can save your life just like this 30 seconds might save you. Two and a half minutes to pre-show. And when that award-winning live shot is all said and done, don't forget, you may be in a hurry to get home, but make sure everything's down and all ready to go. Watch out for those lights and think safety. A lot of things to think about in the last over nine minutes of tape that you just watched, but the most important thing to remember is probably just four words. Four words, look up and live, look up and live.